in the network folder I put for the moment two files. I'm going to number them sequentially. Um, it's going to be Campos Mobile Apps Dev 2, How To, 0, and then 1 and 2 and whatever we get up to. So step 0, set yourself up. Uh, set your station and the number one Visual Studio. Let's look at this first one, number zero. Number zero is um, tasks to accomplish every day that you come into the lab. Visual Studio is complicated, uses a lot of resources, memory, etc. Depending on what you install on your own home computer, it's going to be somewhere between four and like 24 gigabytes of space on your computer. The apps that it creates are going to be like one megabytes. And your project as you work on it, the actual folder project is going to get bigger and bigger. Last semester I think it got up to about 150 megabytes. So Visual Studio itself is going to be about four gigabytes installed on your computer. The project CBDB is going to be approximately 150 megabytes by the end. But the actual app that goes on devices will be between 1 and 3 megabytes. It'll compress it, no problem. Uh, and in this lab, 209, um, we've got our basic settings installed, and then they're set with deep freeze. I think I mentioned it last month. But do you see, did you ever notice this little polar bear staring at you right here? Uh, that's deep freeze. So the computer is frozen. Anything that you do to it and change it, when the computer restarts, he goes back to our factory settings. So anything that you do on these computers, if you don't take it with you, will get deleted. Which also means any settings you make to Visual Studio, any th if you change the wallpaper, if you're tired of that color, you put a cool background color, it'll go away. Everything goes away because our deep freeze locks it. Well, our problem is that every time we come in, all that we've done in Visual Studio, like to load it up into memory and get it ready to work, has been deleted. So every time you come in, and I'll walk you through it the first few times we do it, of course, but you're going to need to get used to, on your own, to set your, set your station up. So in general, here are all of the steps, and we'll do them next time. But in general, you just have to create a brand new quick testing project like we did right now. You have to run it in the simulator like we've done. And then eventually, when we've got your device set up, we want to run it on your device. And I would like you to do all of this before I start the lecture. Because while I'm doing the lecture and we're writing the code, you're waiting for it to load up. And you're falling behind. So I'm going to give everyone a chance, of course, at the beginning of every class meeting, for you to do these steps. You know, the first time it'll take you 15 minutes, the second time it'll take you 7 minutes, and the next time you're going to be done in 3 minutes. But you're going to need to do this stuff every time you come in, because I'm going to assume you've done it. I'm going to get started at you know 6:15, or whatever time we decide. So you're going to need to have Visual Studio ready to go after we do it together a few times. Because, for example, eventually when we work with real devices, if you would like to use your own Android device, you must download and install the OEM USB driver for your device every time you come to the lab. On your own home computer, if you install the software to connect to your phone, it's there always. You just connect it and it works. On our computers, even if you sit on the exact same station, you will need to install the driver that your phone uses to connect to the computer, or vice versa, every time. Because these computers erase everything. And we will have a lecture, of course, on how to do that the first time. But this handout here is something that you're going to need to do every time you come in, in the beginning of the day, and starting next week, I will start to expect you to do this on your own. Thursday, I'll walk you through it, of course, but you're going to need to do this on your own come next week or so, which is simply to wake it up, simply to get it all into the memory, Visual Studio running, stuff in the memory, your device loaded up. Um, and it needs to be done every time you come in. Uh, follow these steps every time so that you're ready to get started when I begin lecturing. Subsequent deployments to the real or virtual device will be a lot faster. The first time, because it has to uncompress and you know prepare a lot of things, you're going to see the little bar going and going and going. But then subsequent times, it happens quickly, faster. 
And there's other handouts, are there other other links here? Like I'm saying, here's how to go to the Visual Studio getting started, uh, how Visual Studio uses Cordova, uh, documents over from Visual Studio, um, how to set up uh, iOS, if you want to start to do this on iPhones and such. What else? Uh, more stuff about Android emulators, and more of their documentation on mobile development. So, oh, and then more stuff here. So eventually right here, we'll look at this one too, uh, publishing to a store. So there's the handout straight from the horse's mouth on how to set this up to actually publish to the real app store, which is going to be part three of the class, which we'll lecture together. But uh, all of these links here we will use throughout the class as time goes on. And for the moment, just take a copy of this, print it out if you want. We'll do this on Thursday when it's our first day to work for real. Any questions on this handout? Number zero. Let's look at the next handout. <clears throat> Number one. Uh, how to one Visual Studio. If you want to set this up, how to set up Visual Studio at home. Now I do recommend that even if you've um, read this uh, and are planning to do it at home, um, you know, read it and reread it and practice and do it over because it's just odd. I've seen so many examples of people, they say, I tried to do it, I followed your instructions, it didn't work. And then, you know, they call me over to their computer and I say, well, just do it one more time from step one. They do it again from step one and then it works. So something along the lines was missed, something fell through the cracks, and then you do it exactly the same again and then you do it right. So don't be discouraged if it didn't work the first time or the second time. Sometimes on the third time, following the exact steps, it finally works. Sometimes I can't explain it. I, I don't know. Sometimes there's gremlins in the computer and it just didn't work. But then other times, oh, you mistyped something and then it worked. So that's why I have these handouts because there's still a lot of moving pieces. If you want to set this up at home, this one assumes a, a Windows computer. I'll give you the Mac one in a moment. Um, yeah, it's on a different one. This is this one's for Windows. Uh, so you go to visualstudio.com, you download it, you install it. Maybe it'll tell you you need Microsoft.net, so you do that. There will be a screen eventually that says what development environment do you want? What workload? What are you trying to create? So uh, you want mobile development with JavaScript. And then if you're going to use real devices, if you've got a real device to work on, it'll probably only take about four and a half gigabytes or so of installation space on your hard drive. If you're going to use some of the more advanced simulators and emulators and such, we'll see what the difference of those are later. That could be up to around 23 gigabytes of space. And that one only assumes you're setting up your development environment at the moment to target Android devices. If you're also setting yourself up to create iPhone devices, that's a, a few more gigabytes to be used up. So the software requirements to do this, you know, relatively a lot of hard drive space, a newer, better computer is always better, you know, um, more RAM and uh, hard drive and all of that. The better your computer is, the better this works because it's complicated processing programming software. Um, either of these options that you choose, you're still going to use Google Chrome for some other testing, which is a free download, and there's the link. So after you set up how you're going to develop your apps, get a cup of coffee, because depending also on your internet connection, it may take a while to download and, and set up. Okay, you, you install it, you set it up, you double click it to start it, and then it's going to ask you to sign in with a Microsoft account, just like we did in here. Well, you can skip it the first 30 days, but eventually it will keep nagging you and you'll have to log in with a Microsoft account. So you'll want to do that. What we did earlier today was this. We created a new project. We chose a blank Apache Cordova project. You can name it whatever you want. We, we left it the default. We left all of these things the default. 
and then a quick look at in the top bar there's debugging we're, we're focusing on Android and we're simulating when we get to real devices that'll be a different thing there there are often pop-ups that happen the very first time you do it I've already for for the just to speed it up in class I've already turned off some of these things you may get a pop-up about your your uh, firewall or something else about Java or Node.js. You might get these pop-ups totally normal. They're not going to happen here. I've already deactivated them just for speeding things up. Um, so all that we did in class earlier today is summarized in this handout. And then we will do this next time when we, ha when we work with real devices. Um, how to set up a real device. So we'll do this, but basically we need to uh, we need to activate the device into developer mode. When you get it, it's in consumer mode. It's in regular person mode. We want to upgrade it to developer mode, which doesn't jailbreak it, doesn't void your warranty, anything like that. But there's a few steps. And then we need to install the software for the computer to communicate with the phone. And you need to do that every time you come into the lab. Then you'll have the option, like I was showing here, that I can switch between simulate into real device. If you don't follow those other steps, you won't be able to do this. But we'll do that next time. And then again, uh, these links are the same as the other handout. Uh, but that's handout number one in general, getting started with a blank project, a quick look at Visual Studio, setting it up at home. And uh, if you're able to, if you have access to, I would recommend to try to do this at home. Because um, the more you practice this, the better, besides class time. Questions on this handout? And I should have put these other ones already, but let me put in a few more hand handouts back in the network folder. That's that's the issue again. Yes, if you try to do this at home for the Mac, you you have, I mean, for iOS, iPhone, you have to have a Mac. So um, there are ways to simulate that, but unless you have a Mac, you you can't quite go to it. I have my Mac handout there. I forgot to turn it into PDF. I'll do that in a moment. Uh, but let's. Okay, I'm going to put two more items there for the moment. Go back to the network folder, copy these ones. I'll turn the printer on in a moment. We've got number two, anatomy of a Visual Studio project, and WW folder. So copy both of those to your flash drive. Looking at number two, there is a detailed explanation of what you're going to find in the Solution Explorer of a brand new Visual Studio Cordova project. Whenever you go to File New Project, you always get this basic setup. Um, let's look at this more in detail. Uh, we saw the overview screen. Remember, you can get back to it under Project Overview. Let's go back to Visual Studio and let's go look at the config XML file and look at these other screens that I glossed over earlier. So back to Visual Studio, back to your config XML file. If you closed it, you're going to find it here under the Solution Explorer and you'll find the file near the bottom, config XML. We have tool set. You don't really need to do anything here. It's just informational. We're using in the background Cordova version 6.3. I believe there's Cordova version 7 at the moment. So we've got one version back, but usually the latest version is kind of too new. 
when we um, maybe actually maybe if you install Visual Studio right now you probably will get Cordova 7 because ours was installed in January when the semester was going to start we got version 6 but if you're at home you'll probably get version 7 and it's not a big deal if you've got one or the other and I believe you're able to install version 6 if you want but it doesn't matter the version and behind the scenes we've also got node installed and other things and we've got the ability to with a little bit more setup we've got the ability to create Android iOS and Windows projects now this doesn't mean Android 5 and iOS 4 that that's not what that means it means that the Cordova shortcuts the Cordova library is 5.21 to connect with Android, Android 7 or 8 or 6 or whatever. So those numbers just, this screen is just informational. You don't have to really do anything here. Look at this under common. Under common are some useful things. Display name is the name that will appear below your icon. When eventually this goes to devices, you've got your icon and the name below it. So just to kind of play with this, you can change that. My amazing app. And that's what will appear below the icon when the person has it installed on a device. Or when we simulate it on, uh, or when we test it on, on a testing device. Yeah, you can put anything you want here. The only thing to remember is, you know, if I give it a big name like that, your, your text is probably going to be cut off. Or it might overlap with someone else's icon. Different app. Start page. I had said last month when we started to create the CBDB login system, remember, used index.html. So Visual Studio, Cordova, will assume your starting screen is index.html. And that's what we get here in the Solution Explorer, index.html. In theory, in theory, you are able to create a. Um, don't do this, but you're able to create some other, you know, start.html. But you would have to then change the default config XML to point to that other file. Um, I wouldn't worry about that. So, index.html should always be our starting file. Uh, our default locale is English, US English. Obviously, if we were then focused on different audiences, OK, English UK, um, English South Africa, I believe, is ZA. Anyway, um, if we're doing other languages, what's, um, what's that? What's, what language is my uh, app in here? Spanish from Mexico. So if you wanted Spanish from Spain, like that. Uh, this is the default locale. Using the globalization plugin of Cordova, it can be set up to be in different languages. Uh, you, you don't like put commas here and set up the other ones like that. So. Just leave this default, but if we wanted this in other languages besides English, we would set it here, and we can also affect that using Cordova globalization plugin, which we'll cover later. Package name. By default, this says io.cordova.myapp and some numbers. Uh, for the moment, just type this com.yourlastname.myapp. This package name is a unique identifier. <coughs> this is unique identifier, which, which uh, the app stores use as a way to differentiate your app from someone else's. Because when you go to the app stores, there's a bunch of apps of calculators. There's a bunch of weather apps. There's a bunch of apps that do the same thing. And there's a bunch of apps that seemed to be named exactly the same thing. Well, there is, for example, 
an app uploaded called Calculator, and there's another one called Calculator. But the difference is this part right here. This is a reverse domain name, right? If I have my, my last name, campus.com, um, you know, if you've got a website, you know, uh, campusapps.biz, this is a reverse domain name, the .com, .net, whatever, then the main part of the address, then dot the name of this app. This is what separates one calculator app from the other thousand. This is what's going to separate your CBDB app from your classmates. So if if you were to um, when we get back to CBDB, if if you were to write this in your app, and when it comes to the end of the class for you to upload it to the real app store to get graded, it's going to reject it. Because if I upload my copy of campus of com.campus.cbdb and then you try to upload your copy there's a conflict that app already exists so you don't have to have a real website that exists right here just any unique identifier and even the default that was there that io.cordova that'd be fine um, it's just that this this is unique to your app. No one else should have that same name. Version numbers, this should make sense. Version 1.7.2. Right? This is where you show the major, minor, and build of the project. So we're currently working on version 1.0. This is completely arbitrary what you what you write here. You can make it up whatever you want. Sometimes I see that. Well, I, I'm not at the full uh, the full version to release to people yet. I'm only on version 0 0.1.1. And then as you work on it, you update it, and then eventually, okay, we're going to release it to the App Store. Okay, now we're going to release a version 1.0. Oops, there was a bug, so I need to upload version 1.0.1. .1. These numbers here can be anything you want. What I recommend is sort of a scheme based on the based on the date so i like to do version 1.1.0018030606 1 that's the date with year first then when we work on it later i could increment that 1.2.2018037 so these numbers can be anything you want, but I would recommend something like this, putting the date into the build. It's valid for you to do that. And um, this just differentiates the different versions of the project. Author, description, these make sense. Who created this app? You can put here simply your name, or you can put in, you know, the name of your company, and you are a company or you are an app developer simply doing this. You don't have to be certified or you don't have to go through a, you know, a process where you, where you get a license. Anyone can be an app developer. You need the software, you need the knowledge, you need the idea. So yeah, you can make yourself up here as any sort of author of your app. Um, anything you want here at all. Cool apps for you. That's me. That's that's my company name. Yeah. So anything you want to put here. Again, this testing project, we're going to delete it. You can keep it if you want to take it home with you, but this is just for practice. And then the description, pretty obvious, a description of what the project is. This is just simply saying that it's a blank project. You could say something like, my first app. Any kind of description, what the app is about. When we do this for real with CBDB, obviously, we'll write a real description here. And the point of this is this is stuff that the app stores will look at. This is what the app stores will um, 
we'll use to uh, to market you for people to find and download. Do they also read this to uh, review your app? I don't believe this is by default for the user to see. The, um, the app stores themselves can see it, but not the people. And we have a different screen on the app stores for us to write exactly what we want the people to see. When I tested this on a real device, you saw that when I have it in portrait mode, it looks a certain way. When I go to landscape, it looks another way. So that it changes orientation. I've got it right here, landscape or portrait. Or I can lock it, landscape or portrait. Eventually, when, um, when we make our app, we're going to choose one of those. And just to show you here, I made a change. I'm going to save it and run it, and it'll be, it'll be locked in a moment. So we can keep it vertical. If you notice something like uh, the Facebook app, it's vertical. If you look at Instagram, if you look at most apps, they're, they're often vertical. Uh, so you can lock it if you'd like, or leave the default that it'll, it'll shift around. And so I just made the change. I'm loading the latest version. And I go sideways, and it doesn't. I locked it. Full screen. Um, uh, yes. For the build? Yeah. No, this one's got to be a full number. If you the closest, if you want to do that, you know, if you put if you put twenty oh eight twenty eighteen over here, and then zero three. 06, but you can't put any more dots here because that there will already be dots uh, right here. One dot something dot something. So you can't get more than those dots. So you can do it that way. So um, we've got these last items here um, full screen. Uh, you, you can't quite see it because you're testing on a web browser. But on mine, it still shows the top bar, my battery level, the time, uh, antenna strength, so forth. If I wanted to take over the full screen, there's my button, full screen, so that it hides uh, that top bar on the device. Domain access is a little complicated for the moment. Don't worry about it. This is where we can set what online links can we use. And that's for security purposes, because uh, an app can get hacked uh, accidentally if the device is speaking to a web server, and then traffic is intercepted and all of that. So uh, if we set what, is, what, are, what domains, what websites, what servers can we access, uh, we can set security uh, features. So we'll talk about that later. We already saw plugins. Here's where we can add plugins. We'll look at custom plugins later. I want to add the ability to scan barcodes. I don't see that in the core apps. So we will add a custom plugin later to let us scan barcodes. So we can scan the barcodes of our inventory, the comics. Then we've got these platform-specific screens. Uh, here are things that we can set up if we are creating our version for Windows devices. What is the icon's name, its package, its version? Notice here they've got major, minor, build, and revision. And then what version of Windows are we targeting? So if we were creating a, our version of the app for there, and if we've got it fully set up, and what I keep saying about fully set up is when we set up the, um, when you install Visual Studio, again, you have these options. I only chose. Android. If you choose more options to install, when you install Visual Studio, you'll get bigger and bigger software, and then you'll be able to target more of those devices. But under 
windows, we've got some things to set. I'm going to jump over to iOS for a moment. Same thing there, if we were targeting iOS, are we targeting iPhones versus iPads or everything? What version of the operating system are we targeting? Where are we saving the data? The default is the cloud, is it local, is it none, etc. And then Android, some Android specific things also. What's the minimum version of Android? What's the maximum version of Android we're supporting? Which one are we assuming? Um, another spot to write a different version of the code for Android. If a person, like right here, I'm going to go back to the home screen. It's still in the memory. Keep running in the memory, yes. We can set it that if a person leaves the app, it removes it from memory, which is not very common. Uh, how does it launch? Does it show the title of the app? And so forth. So we have here in the config file a very powerful screen where we set these basic aspects of our app for the different platforms. And we'll be coming back to this config file not that often, usually in the beginning of the project, to set these basic settings and set a plugin. We don't have to deal with this screen very much once we set it up. Any questions on the config? Yes. Yes, it's going to be right over here under Android. Minimum API level, that's what we're saying. I want people to have at least version 5. Yes, we also have a way to create different versions of the different operating systems of Android, and then when we publish it to the App Store, the person will get the version they need. So they'll get a version 6 or a version 7, depending on their device. So you're saying you want to you want to hack someone else's app? No, no, I just want to have it in my phone. This is where I'm talking. Yeah. This is the problem that with Android they have uh, ever like uh, they just uh, every single year you have to change your phone just because you cannot upgrade your OS. Uh, maybe I don't quite get the question. We'll talk in the in the break because I don't quite get the question. So this config file, um, config.xml, um, I made a change. So the little asterisk says it needs to be saved. Go ahead and save config.xml and then close it. So after you save it, close it. And then in the Explorer here, right click the config XML file. After you save it and close it, right click it, we have View Code and View Designer. Click on View Code. This config XML file that a moment ago we double clicked was the pretty interface, was the designer view. Buttons to click on and things to select. Technically, it's an XML file, which is a variation. It's a cousin of HTML. So by doing the right-click view code, I get the code version of everything that I saw a moment ago. Line 3, for example, is where I saw to set the name of my app. And uh, line 4 is where I set my description. And there's other stuff here. This is where it was setting Cordova API for Android version 5. Here's where it was to set the index HTML. And there's other things that I see here also that weren't in the other screen. So sometimes we need to be in the nice, pretty, safe interface of the design view, and sometimes we need to peel back, pull back the curtain and look at the raw code. 
sometimes. But this is again behind the scenes of it all is a lot of stuff happening and Visual Studio then kind of shields it from us but we have the ability to pull back the curtain and view the raw code. And you'll see other stuff over here like mentions about uh, certain icons to use for an iPhone 6 or different quality sizes of Android uh, graphics the different sizes and, and, and graphics of um, Windows devices so there's some built-in icons here res icons windows square dot ping or up here on Android res slash icons slash Android slash icon 36 this is a path to a graphic but I don't I don't see icon 36 in, in images I only see Cordova so do you see where this is pointing to outside of the WW folder res folder then we've got here icons through these built-in icons for Android iOS and Windows res for uh, uh, resources, I believe. Android, there's the icon. So these different sized icons for the different kinds of devices. Low DPI or low quality Android devices, medium quality, high quality, extra high quality. So eventually when we do this on real devices, we will see, well, on my device right now, on this real device, that project is right there. It's its icon right there, and it says blank Cordova, and it's the icon right there. So this icon, one of these icons is automatically being chosen and being displayed on this particular device. Uh, probably this is the LDPI, the low DPI. And then on my newer phone, it would probably then choose the extra high DPI. It would show the right um, graphic in the right device. And later, of course, we'll, we'll, we'll take a lesson in making these graphics and such. We, we're going to spend a day working in Photoshop. Because as I said earlier today, if you're going to be the app developer, you're going to need to program the code. You're going to need to debug the code. You're going to need to write the CSS for colors, you're going to need to make the graphics, the splash screen, the icon, everything. You're going, to, you're going to need to wear all the hats. So we will have a lesson where we're going to have an intro to Photoshop. How many of you have ever used Photoshop before? A lot of people, because they usually take, usually take the IMCP program here, right? So uh, if you've never touched Photoshop, we're going to cover Photoshop. Just the tip of the tip of the iceberg. Uh, so that we can edit some of this stuff. You know, it's a it's a cute icon, but I want my icon for my company. I want to design my own icon so that it shows up here, just like these icons of these other apps. So we'll cover some Photoshop. I was thinking about photo bucket. Photo bucket, a little bit different. Yes. So yes. Well, would we want to? Yes, you see here, um, I, I want to start over and do my own kinds of graphics. I, I need to know the sizes and such. In the code view here, um, here are some sizes to guide me to make those, to make those graphics so that they don't look uh, stretched or squashed. And other, other reasons why we may want to go into the code. There are a few advanced Cordova options that Visual Studio doesn't show in the, um, in the design view, in the safe view. Uh, if you know what they are, you can go in here and write them yourself and do things a little bit beyond the basics.
right, so um, we just looked at that, the res folder. There's icons in there for the icon of the app. Uh, nothing really to do in the native folder. And then a screens folder will show a splash screen. Most of the time when an app loads up, there's some sort of graphic you look at for a moment before the app fully loads up. Uh, splash screen. We'll cover those, making cool little splash screens. And then the WW folder. The majority of our work will be in this folder, writing HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So in theory, and almost, if you simply drop a project, a complete web project, into the WW folder, it sort of will work. Because it's assuming, Cordova Visual Studio is assuming an index file. So you can almost simply delete their starting stuff there and drop in your own project, and it'll sort of work. Sort of. So we'll see what else needs to be changed to integrate a web project into a Cordova mobile project next time. But I wanted to show the, I wanted to give you these handouts for the moment. Um, I'm going to put the Mac one there in a moment. I forgot to convert it. Because uh, it's slightly different setup on the Mac if you're going to do this on the Mac. But I, I want to give you these handouts for the moment. Um, I'll turn the printer on again in a bit. But you've got something to do perhaps between now and next time. If you'd like to start to play with Visual Studio at home, it's free. Go ahead, have at it. If not, we'll keep doing it in class. But this is what the class is going to start off with. Visual Studio, we're not going to use Notepad anymore, rest in peace. We're going to be over on Visual Studio and um, real devices and all of that good stuff. General questions on what we talked about today or the other aspects of the class? So I'll put the Mac instructions there in a moment. Um, we'll have a little lab time in case you want to do anything until 9.30. And when we come back Thursday, I'll have more handouts, more things to do hands-on, and then we'll get back into keeping working on uh, CBDV from last month.